What can we be doing, Michael, to give our audience some more tools to navigate this inner critic so they can reach those goals, understanding that it's never going to go away? We, we touched upon the first part of this earlier when we said we have to go around the inner critic towards that danger slash uh, goal that we have. Now, that is easier said than done because going around your inner critic, you're going to get a lot of stuff thrown your way. Um, but there's there's another path to take. And this was first brought into the Western world by a Chris Neff, of whom we talked about a little bit earlier, who did a lot of research around self-compassion. Now, self-compassion sounds uh, at first glance a little bit like woo-woo and fluffy, but it's actually a super powerful concept. So we need to dig a little bit into how to apply self-compassion so that it becomes what, what many um, psychologists call fierce self-compassion. Um, fierce self-compassion is, for example, what for fierce compassion is what the firefighter has that runs into the house to save the kids and the dog, right? That's not like woo-woo, fluffy, soft, I'm going to get a cup of cocoa. That is like, no, you know, fierce compassion, I'm going to risk my life to save these people. And, and that's the kind of self-compassion we, we're talking about here. And Chris Neff has on her, on her website, she lists like close to 3000 studies that look at the effects of self-compassion. And that's a real lot because this stuff only really made it into the Western world in like the, the early 2000s. Um, and, and what they, what they found before we talk about how to apply it is that self-compassion added to any kind of behavior change is always giving it a boost. To be a little bit more precise here, if, for example, you try to stop smoking and you try the, the gold standard, you'll still do better if you try the gold standard plus a little bit of self-compassion. If you're working on weight management, study around that. Um, if you use the gold standard for weight management, you're going to do good. But if you use self-compassion on top of that, you're going to do a lot better. Like There's so many studies out there that show that self-compassion added to any behavior change is just going to outperform the gold standard. So what is self-compassion? To not get too scientific about it, self-compassion means talking to yourself as you would to your best friend. It's not the beating up. It's not, hey, buddy, give up. Just chill on the couch. Forget about the goal. You're not worthy. You're, you're too stupid. You're a loser. You couldn't pull that off anyway. Like We wouldn't talk to our best friends like that, right? Uh, we would say, hey, how, how can we do this? How can we make this easy? What's the first step? What, what, what needs to happen right now? I'm with you all the way. This is how we would talk to our best buddy if they were confronted with the same problem. And that is the idea of self-compassion, of being our own best friend in pursuing that. So as you go around that inner critic, you're doing it with your best buddy, with your wingman on, on the side. Because at, at, the end, at the end of it all, like for all your life and for the rest of your life, there was exactly one person that knows everything you know, that has been with, with you all the way, experienced everything, has all your bad memories. And that's the person you look at when you look in the mirror in the morning. And you better make sure that you have a really good relationship with that person. And, and when you develop that relationship, that is what's called self-compassion. Mm -hmm.